Hi. So it is May. Um, I'm very happy to leave April in the dust. Um, I think it's safe to say nothing good uh, came of my April. Um, in fact, a lot of awful things happened in April. So I'm ready to say goodbye to it. You know, warmer weather, all that kind of good stuff. I am trying to dress more spring-like, um, although this dress doesn't fit me very well. It's kind of squishing me in, but I still like the color, so um, I'm happy with it, at least for this video. How are you guys doing? I'm not sure how I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, I think that's all I can leave it at, you know, day by day, right? Um, I will say that uh, finally I am able to eat normally again, and this may or may not be alcohol. <laughs> and that was tough. I will say this, uh, in the history of people who've had food poisoning, uh, not only emptying my stomach, my intestines, everything out, um, and being unable to eat for like a week, I am the only person in the history of food poisoning that did not lose weight. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened there, but um, I was like, oh, I hope my pants are going to fit better now. They didn't. They didn't. But it is May, so let's do top of the month. Okay, I seriously thought this was gonna be a quiet month. Oh my God, I was so wrong. I was like, I started looking at my list going, oh yeah, this isn't bad, this isn't bad. Oh, there's only a couple things that are spanned the whole month. Oh, that's not bad at all. And then it's like I started digging down into the weeks and like, holy moly. Um, so before we jump into it, this is your first time here. Welcome. My name is Gretchen. I am a tipsy travel gal. I am a licensed esthetician and a travel agent, and it is my goal to eat, drink, and spa my way around the world, bringing you with me, showing you some amazing things to see, some fun things to do, and of course, delicious things to eat and drink. My hope is that that will inspire you to travel, whether that be international or domestic. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Also included in the description below is, first of all, my website, but also a link to my GoFundMe page. Please give that a check. Have I gotten around to updating it yet? No, that's because I've been doing some exciting things. So more on that later, um, kind of finalizing some details. But, um, yes, if you have time to go check that out, I would appreciate that. If you have some extra money to donate, I would be forever grateful. So now that that's out of the way, the next disclaimer, of course, I am not omnipotent. If there is something going on this month that is not on this list, it's not because I'm ignoring it. It's more than likely because I don't know what's happening. So if there is something going on in your neck of the woods that you think I should know about, please, you can comment below. I'll give you a whole other bunch of other ways to get a hold of me at the end of this video. But please um, let me know about it and I'll talk about it next week. Or if for some reason I can't, then we will put it on the list for next year. I'm always looking for interesting things to talk about on a regular basis. Now, how I do top of the month is uh, we kind of start with what's continuing from last month, what's going to be ending soon, and then we jump into the new stuff. I like to focus on things that are going on the whole month first. Um, then, of course, you know, I'm going to focus on things that are going on through this weekend and then uh, kind of just giving you a brief over overview of the rest of the month because this video would be like three years long if I tried to squeeze all of it into one video. Um, I do weekly what's happening and then um, we kind of break things out from there. So let's get started. True story, we've kind of finished up the spring blooms and there isn't anything that's continuing from last month and moving all the way through this month. Like May is officially warm and mid-spring and you know, let's get into it. So next up, we'll talk about what is ending this month. Now, it's been going on all winter long, but the ripe market in Dubai ends every weekend run at the end of the month. Now, I looked. It looks like there's another version of the market through the summer, but I think it's inside. But the outdoor, the really large one, it is ending at the end of this month. If you're a foodie, the Dubai Food Festival is going on all the way through May 12th. Uh, remember, they've got... Not only the festival itself, but they've got those 10 dirham meals where you can go into any of the 50 participating restaurants and get a small meal for only 10 dirham. 
Also, if you are in the San Diego area and you are near the flower fields in Carlsbad, California, Mother's Day, May 12th, is the last day for you to go see the beautiful blooms there. Um, they are definitely at their peak, so you want to get to see those before they go away until next year. The Fuji Shiba Kazura Festival is also ending on May the 26th. True story, I just saw an article. Uh, the town has been overrun with tourists, and they're actually putting up walls. Uh, which means to me that there's some bad behavior going on, as well as just over tourism. If it is something that you are interested in going to next year, personally, I would highly recommend staying in one of the nearby resorts because you have an actual view of the Shibakazura from the hotel. Um, because I think after this year, they might be limiting the number of tourists that are coming out there. So yeah, they were completely overrun this year. And I just, I kind of get the feeling that maybe there was some bad behavior by tourists. You know, what do I always say? Don't be an asshole. Well, you know, hmm. but anyway, um, I'm not sure what kind of what you can see now up until this point, but um, it is still going on until May the 26th. And then, of course, closer to home, we have the Hot Docs International Documentary Film Festival in Toronto. So if documentary movies are your thing, you definitely want to head up Toronto before May 5th when that festival ends. Those are things that I'm carrying over from next month that are ending this month. Now we get into all the fun new stuff. We're going to start in Iceland. If you want to see whale watching in an amazing location, Husavik is the place for you to go sometime between now and September. Husavik is in the north part of Iceland. It is the oldest settlement in Iceland. And for its area, it is kind of like the service center. So think of like a hub where people will come to get supplies and, and things like that. It is the whale capital of Iceland. Galafandi Bay is full of marine life this time of year. And I hope I pronounced that right. I have terrible pronunciation when it comes to any of the Scandinavian countries. It, I just do, so I apologize already. May through September, 23 species of whales show up to Skanfaldi Bay and make it their home. You'll get to see species like humpbacks, which are the very animated ones. They're the ones that breach the most. They do a lot of fin slapping. There are also mink whales, but they also have blue whales, which are the largest species on earth. Their tongue weighs as much as an elephant. There are many tour companies that specialize in whale watching. They take you out in boats from the bay. They know how to keep a safe distance from them. And of course, any travel agent can help you find a great company to work with. Now, it is important to note that Husavik is like a five-hour drive from Reykjavik. There is a small airport that you can fly to into Husavik, but you know, if you're flying, especially from the United States, you're going to be flying into Reykjavik first. Husavik is on Ring Road. So Ring Road is the kind of like a grand circle tour that goes around the ring of the island. I'm going to say it's, it looks like it's almost at the halfway point. There are a lot of tour companies that will take you on the ring road tour. Most of the tours last between like 10 to 14 days. I wouldn't recommend you driving it by yourself in the winter, but in the summertime, you should be able to drive yourself. But again, you know, from the largest city in Iceland, it's about a five hour drive. I mean, it's stunning country up there. You could, you could do much worse when going whale watching. From whale watching to the Alps, let's head to Austria. Do you like investigating caves? I can tell you that I have no desire to go underground. However, going into a mountain is very intriguing to me. And if that's something that interests you as well, you want to head over to Ice Weissenfeld. Most people from the United States know them as the Werfen Ice Grotto and Caves. Ice Weissenfeld is the largest ice cave system in the world and is one of the few ice caves that are open to the public. 
although you only get to investigate the first mile. I'm, they something they go something like 40 kilometers deep, but the tours only take you in that first like kilometer portion. Situated in the Tenen Mountains, they are 40 miles outside of Salzburg. And there is public transportation to Werfen from Salzburg. And there are shuttles that will take you from there to the mountain base camp. This is a natural phenomena. And even though it is summer in Austria, the ice caves are below freezing. So it is recommended that you bring hiking boots and warm clothing. Because when you get in there, it's going to be probably under 32 degrees Fahrenheit, even if it's 80 degrees outside. Now, you can hike to the ice caves, but there is a cable car that will take you to the top in three minutes. So, <laughs> I mean, if I was doing it, that would 100% be me. <laughs> it's a daytime thing. So the hours run from 8.30 in the morning to like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I think the last gondola goes up like at 3.20 or something like that. And of course, you can't just explore the ice caves on your own. You have to have a tour. When you buy a ticket to the entrance of the ice caves, it's going to pay for your cable car ride up and the tour. And there are discounts for children and seniors. And they remain open till October, weather permitting. Now, if going into ice caves is not your thing, but you still want to go to the Alps. Next, we're going to head to Grossglockner High Alpine Road. Starting May 1st, running all the way through October, weather permitting, the Grossglockner High Alpine Road is open. This pass is, of course, closed during the winter because of this. I can't even imagine, nor would I want to drive in that at all. But they spend the spring laboriously clearing the snow and, weather permitting, the passage becomes passable the 1st of May. This is a 48 kilometer mountain pass with 36 turns. Now, I have lived in the mountains before. I actually lived on the top of a mountain before. If you've never driven in the mountains, it's not like you don't do this, okay? You don't like circle the mountain because the mountains are huge. You also don't drive st straight up because that would be impossible. Instead, what you do is you go up one side and you just make these really weird hairpin turns as you go all the way up to the top and then you usually circle the top and then you can come back down that is how this mountain works. There are 36 hairpin turns on the Grossglockner High Alpine Road. The highest point on the road takes you to 2,500 meters. This is known as Eidelweisspitz. And there you can see the peaks that are around you. Um, that is not the tallest peak, of course. There are some 3,000 meter peaks, the tallest one being Grossglockner Peak. Now, Grossglockner Road actually takes all kinds of traffic. If you are driving it yourself, you're going to be on the road with tour buses, other cars, motorcycles, bicycles. I mean, no. No, I wouldn't. No. Not only do you get to witness the stunning scenery, as you're driving through the Alps, you also will get to see the wildlife of the Alps. Things like ibex, marmots, and golden eagles, for example. There are plenty of stops along the way. There are 12 Adventure Worlds and nine exhibitions. It's gated during the winter, so when it's a toll road. So when you get there, you're going to have to pay to drive this road. And when you get there, they will have a map with all the destinations and places for you to stop, lookout points, so on and so forth. This is usually a day trip for most people. Um, it will take you the majority of the day to drive it. It's kind of, I think it's pronounced Lens. It's about like an hour away. They recommend having that as your starting and ending spot so you're not trying to drive to and from Salzburg, which is the, clear, the closest large town, which I believe is like three hours away. Another uh, Another bonus in staying in that town is it's literally like 40 miles from the Italian border and the Dolomites. So, I mean, something definitely to consider when you are in that area. Now, I rarely do this, but now we're just going to talk about Europe as a whole. So May 1st is May Day. Now, there's two meanings to May Day. We talked about one yesterday, uh, the European festival marking the beginning of summer. It's all about rejuvenation and fertility and all that kind of good stuff. We're talking about the other one, which is also known as International Workers' Day. This date was actually selected because it was the date of the Haymarket Riot in Chicago. 
In 1886, the Socialist Labor Movement was starting to organize and they had a general strike on May 1st. And workers gathered in Haymarket Square to uh, do demonstrations in support of the strike. That strike was about an eight hour workday. So police were sent to disperse the crowd. So they started clashing with protesters and then somebody threw a bomb and all hell broke loose. Police then fired upon the crowd. So there was a bomb, there was a firefight, and then it just turned into a full-scale riot. Seven police officers were killed, four civilians were killed, as well as 60 officers being injured and well over a hundred civilians being injured. There were a lot of repercussions to this. Uh, the the uh, organizers of the strike were actually hung in the public square. It was an event. It was definitely a huge event of the labor movement. Now, this day is actually a huge public holiday in many countries, especially all over Europe. The United States decided to adopt Labor Day as their public holiday, but in Europe, it's May Day. Now, I'm going to, the reason why I'm talking about May Day is because I have been in Europe for May Day, and I'm going to tell you this. Your options are few, right? I actually flew in on May 1st once, and I literally, I flew into Brussels and I literally thought Brussels was a ghost town and I thought this was a mistake for me to come here. Uh, but it turns out everything was just shut down. And the reason why I'm talking about it is because if you really want to hang with the locals, you want to do it on May Day because everybody comes to the public squares and hangs out. In the main like gathering areas, there are restaurants open and there is food. Everything else is very limited. Most, I mean, all stores are shut down. So be prepared for that. You're going to have to eat in like a touristy, high people volume area. But like I said, if you want to go hang out with some locals, May Day is the day to do it because everybody's off work. We're staying in Europe. We're going to move along to Portugal now. I talked about this last week as one of my bucket list places to go, but Madeira, Portugal is having the Madeira Flower Festival. It starts May the 2nd and it runs all the way through the 26th. Now, this island is blessed with its beauty. I mean, it's pretty much gorgeous year round. It is filled with volcanoes and lava rocks and flowers and vineyards and, uh, just, I mean, it's stunningly gorgeous, but in the spring, it just comes alive with the spring flowers. This flower festival is a celebration of renewal and hope. The month is dedicated to the beauty and fragrance of flowers, and it focuses a lot on their flower parades. There are several throughout the month, um, including one that has classic cards, but there are a lot of other events throughout the islands that are all ages appropriate. There are golf tournaments. There is the Wall of Hope where children go place flowers into a large wall to kind of inspire hope. There are floral carpets. There are avienda walks. Uh, there are concerts. So the island just comes alive with color and you know, the scent of flowers and just a gigantic party. I actually, if I get to go, that's kind of when I want to go. You know, that's you know, that's going to be on my bucket list for May. But yeah, you got all the spring bloom flower festivals other than Amsterdam. This is one of the places that I would love to see. All right. Now we're heading off to the land down under. Let's go to Australia. The 3rd through the 12th, Adelaide, Australia is hosting Tasting Australia. This is 10 days of culinary greats in one place, creating a culinary cornucopia of sorts. It is one of the longest running food festivals in Australia, and it does have a central hub. It is called Town Square. This hub is free to go to, and it is family friendly. Now, of course, if you're buying food and drinks, you got to pay for that, but this is, you can go there and just hang out with your friends, have drinks, bring the kids. It's a fun time. Now, there are also other events, events like pasta parties, master classes, tasting tables. Those you have to purchase, 
And the events run from very affordable $10 to all the way to like $295. And you can buy those tickets and get your reservations online. You don't have to like get there and then do it that way. The town square is open from 11 a.m. to like between 9 and midnight at night. It kind of depends upon the day of the week. Um, the events are by the event time. You will know that when you book your tickets online. If you feel like going to a food festival, I can't think of a better place than Australia. Last but not least for this week, we're going to head to Kentucky. Who knows what's happening on May the 4th in Louisville? I'll give you a hint. The Kentucky Derby is happening at Churchill Downs. It is the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby. I was there last July, hence the mug. Um, Churchill Downs is actually right outside downtown. It's got a lovely museum. You can go there and actually tour the race course, which I would highly recommend. They have this amazing video before you start your tour um, that kind of like runs you through the history. And they update it every year with the newest winners of the race. Actually, a friend went with me. It was a ton of fun. Highly recommend. I really wish I was there. I'm not even sure I'm into horse racing as much, but I can tell you right now, I want to wear one of those big hats. I want to be in that crowd cheering on my pick in the mile. So that's happening this weekend. I had to mention it. Two weeks leading up to the Kentucky Derby are packed with things to do, but you know, obviously it all culminates with the Kentucky Derby. So good luck to all the participants and I hope you guys pick a winner. So now let's do a quick preview of the things that are happening next week through the end of the month. It is sumo time in Tokyo. That's right. Sumo tournament of May is taking place for two weeks starting on the 12th. And if you are looking for a unique festival to go to also going on in this time frame, the Sanja Matsuri Festival is also happening in Tokyo. This is Tokyo's largest festival. It brings millions of people. And that uh, this festival honors the three men who established the Sensoji Temple. Um, so that is going on this month. Some other unique festivals that are going on is the Carnival of Cultures in Berlin. It is a uh, is where a diverse collection of nationalities uh, perform on moving floats and a parades where they have their um, their nationalities, music, dances, performances, and visual arts and aerobatics. That sounds like a ridiculous amount of fun. That's the 17th through the 20th. Sicily, there is also the International Kite Festival. This one at San Vito Lo Capo. The United States is hosting a multitude of hot air balloon festivals. There is the Temecula Valley Balloon and Wine Festival in Winchester, California, as well on the other side of the country in Alabama, the Alabama Jubilee Hot Air Balloon Classic is taking place in Decatur. There are some more flower festivals and shows. The Infiorata di Noto is in Sicily, Italy as well. And of course, if you head on up to London, there is the RHS Chelsea Flower Show, one of the largest in the world. And Portland, Oregon's got the Portland Rose Festival going on. Music festival season is starting. This month is the Hangout Music Festival in Gulf Shores, Alabama, where they literally set up stages on the beach with pools on the sides. <laughs> and you get to hang out for three days in the sun. Pretty high profile acts come to this one. And then there is the California Roots and Music Festival in Monterey, California. Last but not least, it's cheese rolling time. Yes. The end of the month is the Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling. In Cooper's Hill, England, where they chuck a huge wheel of cheese down a hill and people chase it. Yeah, I can't wait to talk about that one. So like I said, May is chock full of a bunch of different kinds of stuff to do. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Remember, if there's something that you think I've missed or something you want to inform me about, please comment below or you can go on any of my social media accounts. I am Tipsy Travel Gal, all one word, on all the major social media platforms. If that's not your thing either, you can also go to my website, tipsytravelgal.com. If you look at the top menu, there's a contact me link and you can go to that and send me an email. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And until the next time, bye.